Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23 and it is now time for round 10 of our MotoGP career mode. It is time for the Red Bull Ring of Austria and we absolutely smashed the qualifying starting from pole position after beating Enea and Jack by more than 2 seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Austrian GP. So with us doing such a stellar job in qualifying, I think the only option for us to do today is to use power setting one. So let's wait for the red lights to disappear and away we go. Wow, a wheel spin on power setting one? Are you mad? <laughs> oh my god, this one is uh, not going quite so well as we dive over the inside of many riders into the Nicky Lauda curve to take over fourth place. So not a bad start from the KTMs against the Ducatis, but look how slow the 120% difficulty AI go into 2A and 2B. Why are they so slow even on the maximum difficulty? This one could be very well just an easy experience around the Austrian GP. I do love this circuit here in MotoGP 23. It feels absolutely fantastic. And I tell you what, the gap to Jack Miller is almost a second and the gap to Binder in second is seven tenths. Great start from Brad Binder. It's excellent to see the KTM rider up there because uh, uh, until this point where has Brad Binder been in our MotoGP 23 career mode? Not fair to say about last season because of course we replaced him in the factory KTM team but now he's back he's just not doing anything is he? He's uh, Jack Miller's been doing everything as he currently stands second place in the MotoGP World Championship with a very small voice crack there. I don't know if you caught that, but uh, yeah, clip it if you fancy it. We'll have to make a compilation of those voice cracks at the end of the season, I guess. But anyway, into turn 11. This is the final corner here in the Red Bull Ring, and that is now, astonishingly, a two-second advantage as we cross the line. We're using power setting one, ladies and gentlemen. A lap time which was pretty solid, if I do say so myself. A 127.768, I believe it was. Good performance. But the AI, they've got to book up their ideas and start defending better than this. I can't believe it, though. Two seasons of absolute torture and torment. Fighting against the 120% difficulty AI. Watching Peko, watching the beast disappear into the distance. has all come to an end, and it's now us doing that to the AI on the hardest difficulty with the lowest power option available. 2.8 seconds clear now from Brad Binder. You can see the gap already materialising there on the left-hand side. About an eight-tenth of a second gap it is to Miller as well from behind Brad. So Brad's he's doing well here. And now Jack Miller's fallen by the wayside ever so slightly. Enough for Enea Bastini to get through. So the number 23 is now ahead of Jack Miller. There's actually a lot of threes on the left-hand side of your screen there. Brad Bender, 33, 23 for Bassanini. The great Mark Marquez, 93. And then, of course, Jack Miller with the number 43. Now, interesting enough to actually uh, look at there. There's something that's uh, piqued my interest. Fabio Quattraro in sixth place. Interestingly, the Yamaha was the bike that we all made a comment about in the early stages of the test in Jerez. And they said that uh, they'd made a big difference. Not really that noticeable, but they're up there in the top six. At least one of them is in the sense of uh, Fabio Quartararo. Now, of course, uh, Fabio making big news recently. I don't know if you've seen. I think it happened, what, yesterday? Today? I don't remember anymore. But Fabio announcing that he is going to stay with the factory Yamaha team until 2026. Two more years of the YZR M1 for the 2021 MotoGP World Champion. Questionable for many. But it's something we need to discuss. So come back in a couple of days' time or possibly in the live stream on Monday and we'll have a good old chat about Fabio Quattararo's chances and future with the Yamaha YZR M1. Bit deep there into turn four for the Schloss goal. Now it's an interesting one for this game because, uh, of course, the game classes that as turn five. But it's actually turn four because of 2A and 2B, the way they calculate the corners around here in the Red Bull ring. So if I refer to that as turn four... Don't panic, it's just I'm used to the real life one compared to the computer game. So, out of the worth curve, we are now five whole seconds ahead of Brad Binder. Bastin is still there in third place, but cast your minds back to last season and even the season before. Every single race, it's very much like ass in this track. It's so easy against the AI. If you're looking to try and get a victory and 
on 120% difficulty for the first time, I would suggest a track such as Assen or maybe the Red Bull Ring of Austria. I would probably say this is the... Hmm. Maybe the easiest track in the game? That's given me an idea to talk about easiest tracks from now on, but this is definitely one of the easiest tracks in the game. I mean, there's a lot of straights and the braking marker suits me perfectly. This is a circuit that just works so well for me. I love straight line braking, getting the tyre, just gently moving in, all calm and collected. Is exactly how I like to ride here in MotoGP 23 and what? 90%, 80% of the corners are all straight line braking, so it just suits me down to the ground absolutely perfect. Can't really say if it's just the AI that's bad. I do feel really good around the circuit, as just mentioned, but uh, I do think they are absolutely woeful around there. I mean, if looking across, I think you can see them just going over there to turn into turn five, yeah, for the Sloss Gold. Unbelievable. They're so slow around here, but I tell you what, I'm just going to absolutely go for it. Full send. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to go for it. Let's just try and get a 1 minute 27 lap time. I don't think that's unreasonable. It's about a second slower than now a lap time set with their power setting 2 or power setting 3 I think I used. I think I did. I think I used a combination of all of the, of two of them. But out of the right hand of them, across the line, this is a 1 minute 27. It's a 1 minute 27, 8, 6, 8. Found a few more tenths on lap number 4 without any qualm or issue. The challenge in the Silverstone in yesterday's video, I discussed about getting over 100 points on Jack Miller. Soon we could be looking at over 120. It might not be possible in this race unless Jack falls behind, but for the next race in, what, a couple of moments time? We are definitely going to be over 120 points. I strongly feel that. I do think at this point now, Enea Bastini in third might have enough now to put him second place in the World Championship, which is just Ducati dominance. Amazing. The absolute top spots for the factory Ducatis. The, the, the red brand at the top of the page once again here in MotoGP 23. And even in real life as well. But uh, this lap time's not too bad. Could actually be looking at potentially another improvement here. Love that change of direction from turn 8 to turn 9 there. It's so, so beautiful to turn in. And as I said many times before, if you t if you angle it right and then hit the uh, the screenshot button or go into photo mode, you can get a beautiful angle of just the front wheel lifting up and the rider pushing that weight across whilst the front wheel is still very much in the air. Across the line, it's another fastest lap for us. It's a 127, 7, 3, 4. And I've got to say, Brad Binder... He's not yielding. He's still very much in second and still very much comfortable with the nine points. And Abbasnini does look to be getting closer as he go into the Nicky Lauda corner. He's close, but no cigar yet. As we dive out to the left-hand side, still not using any ride height device. If you have been questioning that watching this video, then a couple of reasons is I just don't ever find any speed with the ride height device. I find that uh, balancing the throttle is much better than just hitting the triangle button or A button or whatever it is you've got set. Mine, I have the X button, which is the PlayStation controller, so that's the A button for the Xbox prompts as you get on PC. And I just find that uh, balancing the throttle also with lower power options such as power setting 1, there's not really any chance of you getting a wheelie since the power is on such a low amount. Now also to make this a little bit more challenging I decided not to change the fuel. I, I went just full fuel. At first I used to think that made a big difference but now I'm beginning to question whether it does or not. I think it makes the bike feel a little bit lighter but it's not particularly noticeable as uh, we go into turn 10 and then into the final corner for turn 11 on the penultimate lap. This, uh, this race has gone by extremely quickly and uh, across the line we might drop into the higher 127s which we do but certainly nothing or no calls for concern. A good solid pace, I would say. A deviation of, what, five tenths? That's solid. I'm really happy with those lap times, and considering that's power setting one, I think that's a damn decent effort, if I do say so myself. Looks like this final lap could be a bit of a stinker, though. We'll see. We'll keep on pushing, and we'll keep on uh, trying, as we now have a 15-second advantage over Jack Miller. 
Now the objective was to beat him in the qualifying session and beat him in either the sprint or the featured race. And uh, yeah, good effort, Jack, but uh, nothing's happened. And I tell you what, I don't think anything's happened on that top eight. Myself in the lead, yeah, that's uh, that was easy enough. But Brinda, Bastianini, Marquez, Miller, then Quattararo, Zarco, and Mir. I, I don't think that's changed at all. I think very much status quo for the entirety of this sprint. Fascinating as we now launch it into the Roche corner for turn six or turn seven, and then into the left hander for the Worth curve for the final couple of corners here in the Red Bull Ring of Austria. One of the smallest and shortest and quickest lap times you can do around here in the Red Bull Ring. Certainly adds to a different style in this game. <gasps> I've lost the front! Oh! Oh my god! I thought I'd lost the front! <laughs> Oh, we live a very lucky life there. <laughs> oh, goodness me, across the line, we do take victory, but uh, came as a scare, no less, right there at the end of the sprint. So a victory then by 11 and a half seconds ahead of Brad Binder, 13 ahead of uh, Vene Bastini, and that is your top nine, with Paul Spargo getting points again. He's on a bit of a roll recently. Keep it up, Paul. It's always good to see the number 44 in the points albeit sprint or race and there is the championship standings as I mentioned I do feel that an Air Bastinini with another good result will put him second place in the world championship it's not there yet but it will be in the race in just a matter of moments so then here we go guys and girls a quick interval with the trans uh, transmission and we now wait for the red lights to go out and they do go out again again I'm still spinning up the rear even on power setting one we've dropped all the way down to 14th and now we've got all the hard work to do once again as we made bit of contact there with Alicia Sparger but look at his brother Paul's up to six marvelous from the number 44 on board the tech three gas gas is gonna try and go around the outside of not one but two and then into the left hand side we did make that stick with a move almost as good as Fabio Quattararo's on Jack Miller a few years ago. Ooh, look at Miller, he's all over the place. Lord almighty, Jack, keep it together, man. And look at that, even with power setting one, look how fast we were going around the outside of Jack Miller. That is the power of the Ducati. The GP23, look at Marquez, he's all over the place. Maybe that's why the AI can't seem to get it done. They, they struggle, it's, at least it looks like, on the straight line braking. Are they any better going into the Roche corner here? Not really, as we're trying to go around the outside of Marquez. Didn't quite work out this time around, but I'm sure we can get him into this corner here. Possibly, no, no, still very much in the way. I'm trying to refrain from just uh, launching in the lunge up on the inside of Marquez. I certainly don't think it's necessary. Yeah, the AI are playing like a rookie. <laughs> they aren't playing like 120% difficulty AI, but I can assure you, if you jump onto your game, with 120% difficulty, you'll have the exact same experience as I'm having right now. And I think my motorcycle is now pretty much upgraded to the point where it's the same as a quick race or even a time trial session as well. So I don't think there's any difference between my game to yours right now. And Air Bastini, four tenths of a second ahead of us, so we've got to try and think of something. Oh, he's going really late. Oh, oh my god. They go so slow into 2A and 2B. They really can't get it right here in the Austrian GP, can they? This is a lunge. This is it. Oh, I'm up on the inside. It made me nervous there as he tried to cut back in. But I think that's it. That could be curtains. It took us, a, what, a lap and a half. Well, not even that. A lap and a sector to get through on the beast. Oh, okay, okay. That's it, Anaya. Give it back. A little bit messy there going onto the curb. But I was uh, quite confident we'd be able to survive that. But, uh, okay. I'm, I'm game. If the AI wants to get a bit more aggressive and start uh, getting back to their old selves, I would certainly appreciate it. Certainly makes the content more fun. Although I don't mind winning. I really don't mind winning. I had two seasons of absolute torment, as I mentioned earlier. Every single session I finished up exhausted. And yet here, I can just ride the bike and have fun. It's brilliant. But uh, this is the lunge on Bastanini. He was really struggling into that right-hander there, so I had to go for the lunge. He, he's going all out for the lead now. He's into the Red Bull Ring mo uh, Red Bull Mobile corner. Bastianini in the lead temporarily, as I know I'm quite confident, into the first corner. And there it comes. Oh, not quite. Yes, quite. Um, yes, that, that's through. But with power setting one, as you can see, the bike is slower 
for Nene Bastini, but I don't think he's going to be able to defend into 2A, into 2B. It's marvellous. It's done. It's done. We're through. New leader in the race, and I think that's it. Unless... Unless he's going to surprise me. But I can't see it happening. I think it's time we go full send. Look at Paulus Sparger up to fourth at fifth place. That's marvellous. At least the KTMs are having a good outing here today. The Ducatis are doing terrible in this race. Two, I mean, apart from us, apart from us two leading the race, obviously, the two factory Ducatis are doing marvellous, but the GP22s and even the Prima Pramac team, they are nowhere to be seen at this moment. Not even a sniff of the top eight. Quattrara eighth now, Juan Mir, Binder, Aspargaro, Miller, Marquez, Bassanini and myself in first place. That is your top eight in reverse order. And i got to say, it was fun to battle an Air Bassanini for that uh, very short amount of time, but I think it's time to pull the pin. I think it's time to absolutely go for it now. Look at the, the time we found in that final corner, just because we didn't have to avoid another rider. Across the line, that's a 128. So I would say, discount those two lap times we've done there, and let's focus now on this. I would like to assume that we can get every single lap now, either a low 28 or possibly a high 27. We'll see what we can do. But already, look at that. Look at that gap we found. Goodness me. I love this track. I, I feel so good here in the Red Bull Ring of Austria. I'd love to jump on and play with the aces here around here sometime, I think. It's been a while since it really came up. I'm probably one of the select few who actually really enjoys the circuit, to be quite honest with you. I do have a lot of fun around this track. It was one of those tracks I originally thought that was uh, unimaginative and just too many straights, but to be honest, it's really resonated well with me now. And I think it could be that it's just a case of having that feeling, having that understanding, and just knowing your strengths and weaknesses that allows you to go well around a track like this. And having a, such a short track as well, it's very easy to lose the time because a one mistake can result in three or four tenths lost. So it's important now that we try and get some good laps going. But this is definitely going to be a 127 if we keep it uh, keep it clean. Didn't keep it quite as clean as I would have wanted there, but I think it should be sufficient for a 1 minute 27 lap time. Across the line, it is going to be a 127.901. That is a perfectly a full second quicker than the lap prior. And Air Bassini now three seconds behind this could be our ninth race win out of 10 we just acquired what our in fact no i'm wrong there actually is it our eighth win it might be our eighth or seventh i might be wrong there because we didn't win in the term Rio hondo in the race we also didn't win in le mans in the race and we didn't win in the saxon ring in the race so apologies getting a bit too excited seventh victory of the season but on the flip side we do have uh, eight sprint victories so that is amazing and you know what i'm beginning to question that as well it's nine sprint victories i don't know <laughs> it's uh, i've been recording a lot tonight tired and uh yeah not at my best it seems as uh, maths and everything else seems to disappear when we put on the old microphone well into the left hander then this is the worth curve now something i wanted to mention as well and since we've got quite a comfortable lead I better mention it now and then get to the point I was going to mention. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, of course, if you are still enjoying the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. MotoGP24 is right around the corner and hoping, maybe, fingers crossed, I should have early access and be ready to give you a review on the day. So make sure you don't miss that. Make sure you get subscribed to ensure you don't miss out on any MotoGP23 or 24 content. But I had a more bigger point to discuss in today's video we are streaming tomorrow at uh, 1900 hours bst and that will be for the final round of our motor gp 23 ace academy cup held in catalonia for the final time the final cup on moto gp 23 so definitely get tuned see you there at uh, 1900 hours 7 p.m british super summer time i'll see you then so Quick recap then, as we look at the status quo on the left-hand side. It, ah, I'm, I'm wrong. Paul Spargro 
he's found another position. He's now ahead of both Red Bull KTMs. Could we be looking at a podium for Paul? The last time the Gas Gas had a podium was definitely down to me in my first season in MotoGP 23, rhyming accidentally. I can't remember what track it would have been. Sepang maybe in the sprint? Qatar? Possibly Qatar, third place in Qatar. I don't think I got on the podium in Valencia. Just trying to have a look on the gap there. Okay, so I'm in the top spot here. I'm the red disc on the map in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. But before we do look into that, across the line, that is a new fastest lap for me. A 127.635. So into turn one. Bit deep. Steady. We can now take a look at the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Okay, we are now there, just passing the long lap penalty loop. Bastianini into turn one. Behind him is Marquez and Aspargaro. Could we see another 2013 exchange from Moto2? I'd love to see that. I really would. And I've got to say, it looks like Paul's closing in. I'm going to keep my eye on that and I'll, I'll let you know if there's anything that changes. But as it stands, we're looking quite well. Now, I don't know how and what videos I'll have done before MotoGP24 arrives, but if I can squeeze in a very short calendar for our final season in MotoGP23 career mode, I think I will. I have suggested to join a new team for next season because, of course, I think we all are agreeing that this is a little bit too easy. I know you guys wanted the Fantasy Ducati. I know you guys thought it would make it a little bit fairer. But unfortunately, I think it's been too much of an advantage to me. I think as I've got better at a play as a player, the bike has upgraded now to its maximum. It is by far the best motorcycle. I don't think it's anyone's to blame. And I'm certainly not blaming you guys to saying pick the Ducati. But I'd certainly feel that the action has not been anywhere near as enticing as last season. I think the Red Bull KTM season was the best season we've ever had in the sense of uh, amount of effort and time I had to put into it to try and get better and to improve, go up against the difficult parts where the bike wouldn't have any acceleration or speed. Yeah, I think uh, that was the perfect season. So I'm going to try to get one more season done. I can't guarantee it'll be a full season. It'll have to be a short calendar. I've never done a short calendar in MotoGP, but I would like to keep things fresh and I'd like to keep things challenging before we move on to the 24th installment of MotoGP. So yeah, if you're keen on that idea, let me know in the comments section down below. I'm always probing and thinking of ideas to make these videos fun and of course, interesting. So if you think that's a good idea and you feel that's the right approach, let me know. And also if you have any other suggestions, let me know as well. I have uh, I've seen a few other comments about making it a little bit more difficult and I'm, I'm thinking, leave it with me, I'll, I'll figure something out. So, quick look behind us then. I've got to mention it. I was trying to finish what I was saying quickly there because I think we're about to see Marquez come off the podium and we're going to see Paul on it. That's incredible for the AI. Usually because if the bike's no good, that's it, it's done. You don't get anywhere. But for some reason here today... They're eyeing it up, and there is the identical lap time set from earlier on, a 127.901. Good solid lap times coming in there, as a matter of fact. All five of them on the screen on the right, they're all looking quite solid at this stage of the race. Marquez is still holding on to third, uh, third place. I really want to see that battle. I'd love to be race director right now or something, just so I could see what was going on. It would be marvellous. Looking forward to doing the race director on Monday as well, actually, or tomorrow, depending when you're watching this video. I do very much look forward to that. I'll be on the 8th of April 2024. We're going to now go on to the brakes for turn four. It's still close, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking at that graphic. Look at it. They're, they're almost amalgamating into one onto the straight going into the Schloss Gold. He's got to go for a lunge by then. This has been the best part of the, of the race for us so far. I'm still churning out the lap times. Don't worry about me. I've got this one covered. There it is. There it is. Paul Espargo is on the podium. Third place for number 44. Is that Pedro Acosta? Has he snuck in my game somehow? I bet you he has. He's done it somehow. 
<laughs> I'm only kidding. That's unfair to Paul. He's worked hard in this year's career mode. Good effort, but across the line, as a, again, another 1 minute 27.9. Can't fault the, uh, the lap times coming in here. I mean, we're a little bit slower than the qualifying lap time, which is understandable because, of course, we are on... In fact, hang on, I'm wrong. And that lap time earlier on is a 127.6, isn't it? That, uh, that was better than the... Oh, my God. That was better than my pole position lap time. And that was with power setting one, and that was compared to power setting three. I, 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 I'm surprised. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm dumbfounded here. I'm, I'm speech, speechless. I can't believe it. I cannot believe that. Even with power setting one, we've done a better job than my one lap qualifying with power setting three. It's proof. You don't always need power setting three. It's better to... It's better to master power setting three, it absolutely is, but if you can still be fast with the other options, come race situation, you're peachy, you're golden, you've got it sorted. So I would highly recommend learning all of the power options, but uh, we are getting close to that point where the medium rear will start to really struggle. Now what I mean is, I've mentioned this in a few videos before, so this might be an old rope by now, but if you are new to the channel, I would... It would be remiss of me not to mention it. But on that rear tyre, as you see, the green coloured part of the tyre, of course, is what we have left. And as you can see, it's actually getting to the point of the letter R. If we get to that point or beyond it, that's when you notice a significant drop in grip. It's not necessarily going to be on the side of the tyre, but it's going to be more so the middle. When you're coming out on the power is where it's going to affect the most here in the Red Bull Ring of Austria because it's it's not that ag abrasive of a circuit and with power setting one we're not really that aggressive but I do feel that we're gonna start seeing a difference and I only noticed it ever so slightly a moment ago but we're at 128 flat now so for the first time in a long time we have slipped into the 128s I wouldn't say that's anything to get excited about I don't think Bastianini is now gonna pull in three, uh, 13 seconds over three and a half laps. As great as an air is, and as great as the beast has been in our MotoGP career mode, I just don't foresee that happening. So I apologize if you anticipated that, but it's not gonna happen. But this rear tire, yeah, it's going. It is definitely going now. The lap times are beginning to dwindle and the rear is beginning to slip and slide. Oh, goodness me, you're off the track temporarily there as we break now into the right-hander for the rint corner. I do look forward to watching the Red Bull Ring of Austria this season. Of course, before anything, we need to get to Cota, the circuit of the Americas. Will Marquez be back on top? Will Martin be on top? Of course, I did a video on that, discussing that a few days ago. Or as uh, some people are saying, Pedro Acosta. Pedro Acosta is going to win every single race for the rest of the season, I've heard. <laughs> I'll see what happens. If that happened, my God, the commentators have gone mad. <laughs> they really would. So here it is then. 2E, 2A and 2B for the 12th time of asking in today's MotoGP race. The Factory Ducati is by far the perfect bike around this circuit. It's the perfect combination. It's the dream situation. The dream scenario for this motorcycle. It's brilliant. In KTM's back garden as well. KTM's back garden. Power setting one. No problem. Don't worry about it. There's not even a... Ooh. There's not Jack Miller in the top eight. And that gap has now got to 133 points. Binder's in the top six. Paul Espargo's in the top three. But there's no sign of Jack. That's going to be critical for his championship aspirations. I'd put a book on his championship... Of, uh... Yeah, I would, actually. 133 points at this stage. 50% of the race is complete. Yeah. Close that book, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think Jack's going to beat us now. If there's going to be anyone, I think it's going to be Bastianini. He's now got the bike he wanted. I've got the acceleration I needed. I think it should be this. Ooh, not quite into the 127s. I thought we'd be back in, but uh, sadly not for now. I do hope you've enjoyed this uh, somewhat of a time trial session. <laughs> I know it's not been, but you get the point. Onto the brakes. Ooh, a little bit loose. Upon the anchors into turn two, and now into the left hand side. That was very close to being a track limit warning. Kind of felt like we should have had 
a penalty for that one, but into the right hand side in tight apex for the Ramos corner. Ooh, steady, a little bit of a wheelie there, so just beginning to get a little bit aggressive on the power now, trying to fight the wheel spin. Break nice and early before the DHL sign. And keep it in tight to the apex, not quite, but we'll be alright because we can run it wide and then pull it back into the right hand side. Stunning. Really enjoying this track, I've got to say. And I, th I think you can see the other riders passing into... Yeah, just, just a bit. You can see him passing across on the right side of your screen. <laughs> We're so far ahead. And I tell you what, Marquez could be losing to Joanne Mir here in the same spot that Paul got him. The Spargo third is definitely there to stay, isn't it? Very unique race, this one. It's not never used like this separated, but always seems to be here in the Red Bull ring. And after the final corner, then, that is the penultimate lap time. And across the line, it's another decent lap time, but we are now comfortably into the 1 minute 28s. I guess you could knock me for being into the 128s at this stage, but I really tried and wanted to stay in the 127s. But cut me some slack. I am running power setting 1, of course, as the fans are cheering on to be the another... Well, this will be our third season in a row winning in the Red Bull Ring of Austria. Three seasons, three sprint victories, and three pole positions, and three MotoGP featured race wins. What a performance here in the Red Bull Ring. Stunning. Brilliant. Marvellous. I could, I could list all the words again, but I won't. On to the brakes then. This is the DHL corner. This is the Schoss Gold corner. Underneath the DHL signs. It's just, it's all coming up peachy, isn't it? It's beautiful. And this lap time's not over yet. Could still sneak in another little cheeky 127 right at the end of the video. Little cheeky 127 for the aces. you got to love that, haven't you? Big up to the aces. Big up to all the channel members. I do really appreciate all of the extra assistance and support from you guys. I don't think I say that enough, so just want to make sure if you're watching, you are enjoying the video. And I want to say a big thanks to all the support, because today we are now going to be another victor in this time in the Red Bull Ring of Austria. That's what, third recent victory in a row as well? Oh, it's brilliant. Marvellous. Top step of the podium once again. So look at the championship standings. So there you are then, guys and girls. Thanks very much for watching that so far. Confirmation on screen. Paula Spargo, third place, 30 seconds behind, as Marquez did, in fact, hold off against Juan Mir. But Jack Miller down to 10th. Any more surprises? Maverick Vinales down to 15th. Shocking. Absolute shocker. Same to not see Tacker in the points. But anyway, it is what it is. On to the championship standings. Jack has now lost second place. Enea rises to the challenge, but is still 128 points behind. Goodness me, that's a big ask. Anyway, this is the team's championship. I'll leave you the constructors' championship as well, but that's it from me. Thanks for watching the video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.